Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Earthbound Super Series Ancient Cave Tournament Finale. My name is Chaz, aka Stochastic. I'm here with Aerofram. Good evening, everybody, or good morning, depending on where you're at. I hope you're all doing well. We are going to have a fantastic race tonight. It's the finals of our tournament that's been going on all year. Tonight, we'll decide the winner. Tonight's race between Andy Perfect and Temple. Uh, the, whilst the runners are still getting ready, let's take a quick look at how we got here. This is our bracket for our tournament, uh, the elimination rounds. Uh, last year's winner, Aurelix, uh, took the first victory, but then he lost to Thomas in the second round. Uh, Thomas himself lost to Andy Perfect, uh, who had beaten Temple before in the previous round of the bracket, and that put Andy through to the finals of the winner's bracket. So Andy is undefeated. Temple had to come through and win through the loser's bracket. He had to uh, take down Aurelix, last year's winner, which he did. Uh, and then he had to beat Thomas, uh, which he did that to win the loser's bracket. And now Temple is here in the finals. Because Temple came through the loser's bracket, and he needs to win two matches in a row tonight to take down the victory. If Andy wins even one match, he is going to be our champion. For those of you unfamiliar with this, this is the Ancient K version of Earthbound, which is the randomized version. In the past, there's been a couple different versions of it, um, mainly developed by Tomato is the one that I'm familiar with called the Reshuffler, and it was a very volatile program that you can't complete. But Chaz here um, worked on the base of Abyssinum's program and developed it to a point where we are able to race it in a tournament-friendly setting. Um, Chaz, you want to go over some of the quick basics of this before we get started here as the runners finish getting ready? Sure, we'll do that. So the basics of Ancient Cave Mode is that all the story elements have been ripped out, all of the rooms have been ripped apart and then reconfigured into a nine-floor maze. At the end of each floor is a shiny spot that has one of the bosses, and at the end of the ninth floor is Gygus. All you have to do is walk to the ninth floor and beat Gygus. It's that simple. <laughs> Kind of. Uh, so, as you can see here, this is an example of floor one. The runners are going to start in Ness's bedroom, uh, and they'll be wandering through a bunch of rooms until they can find the end of floor one, signified by the shiny spot boss. Some of the things they'll find along the way, they'll find gift boxes. Those have presents in them that scale in level as they go deeper into the floor. They'll find random enemy spawns. The enemies have been slightly randomized as well, but the enemies will get stronger the deeper they go into the cave. Also, they'll find at least one free full heal on each floor, possibly one of the sanctuaries like we've shown here. So, as the runners walk their way along, they'll go through floor 1, 2, 3, 4, and eventually all the way to floor 9 and beat Gygus. However, these runners are going to try and do something a little faster than just walk along through every floor. We have a number of what we call skips or elevators in the game, uh, like this monkey room here. These monkeys are in the way, and if you can get the monkey out of the way, then you can skip through to a different floor. So you can see uh, in this example, this monkey on the left is guarding floor one, the monkey on the right is guarding floor three. So uh, if you talk to this monkey and give the monkey what they need to get them out of the way, you could skip floors entirely. Our runners will definitely need to do that to get a fast enough time to win tonight. All right, with that, it looks like our runners are ready, so I'm going to release them from the race room, and they'll be starting in a couple of seconds. So as we get started right away, you'll notice a number of things different. The runners start with all four members in the party. Uh, so you'll see uh, Ness, Paula, Jeff, and Pooh walking out of Ness's room. They also might look a little different. Uh, we allow for random sprites. And the runners have the opportunity to choose their own sprites. Uh, so they'll each choose their own party how they want it. Uh, let's see what we got. Andy has uh, Tessie in the lead. Uh, and then Dino Jeff as Paula. Uh, Ralse as uh, Jeff. And Teddy as Pooh. Or as Temple's just gone with some of the random, uh, or random sprites in the game. So we hit our first encounter. You'll notice everyone is level one. So these first encounters will get the levels we need badly. There's always a question when you hit the first enemy, whether you 
uh, take them out with a freeze to get them out of the way quickly, or you just bash them out and take a little bit more time but save those psychic points. One of the changes you'll notice here is the text is scrolling by really fast. Um, one of the nice changes is there's an option for instantaneous text, which we as speedrunners love to have. So you're just going to be tabbing through, matching as fast as possible, looking for key items that you picked up and allow you to change your battle strategies a little bit from the vanilla game because you can match through text a lot faster if you were to be critically hit. Yes, in addition to instant text speed, our also runners are also uh, walking at what we call skip sandwich speed. This is the speed that you walk at if you eat a skip sandwich. This is just always on. You can hold the Y button to slow down to a walk, but this lets our runners get through the maze a lot more quickly. About how quickly would you say it normally takes uh, to get through a seed, Eric Um, Once you get an experience and get through a couple, I would say a good average to shoot for is an hour to hour and a half, as long as you don't have any crippling roadblocks, which we can discuss later on as we find them. But that would be forced to walk through a lot of floors or some um, nasty bosses that we may or may not. Yeah, this room they're in right now is a really slow room with all these spawns around and these NPC characters. Uh... Temple and Andy just about the same spot as they're exploring this floor. Not a lot of deviation so far. And it looks like Andy has just found the uh, end of floor one and Temple right behind him. It'll be exciting to see what boss we have guarding floor. Temple checks that door and finds the free full heal. He doesn't need it right now. He's going to try and get to this gift down here. Meanwhile, Andy got in a fight with a lot of skate punks and yes men. Who is our floor one boss? We got Puke. So is this a regular little pile of slime, or is it the special scripted enemy? Doesn't matter, just got a bottle rocket to the face. <laughs> yep, and there is that bottle rocket and takes down the Puke. Yeah, I'll slow it down then, prevent spoilers. <laughs> Andy is going to take the full heal here, and we see Temple's getting a lot of levels. Uh, going through all this leveling up text would take quite a lot of time without the instant tech speed, so I'm sure he's happy to see that. Andy was a little ahead at the beginning. I slowed down the razors to sync them up on our screens. So Temple is on to floor two. You'll notice that the music has changed. One of the features of the Ancient Cave is each floor has its own unique music. Uh, and th th those weird sounds as he's going through the doors, those are normally the door opening and door closing sounds. Because we're using a different uh, music track on these rooms than was originally intended in the game, some of the sound effects have uh, unusual results. And that some quite entertaining and some ear screeching. <laughs> Uh, also, if you hear that pew sound that was going after Temple checks some of those gifts, that's another one of the quality of life improvements we have. Uh, you can hit the right bumper as soon as you get an item, either through a gift or through a battle, and it will automatically drop the item. Interesting strategy on Temple's side. He found a yo-yo, which uh, can have some inaccuracies, but he can equip on any character. Um, I guess in this case, sometimes it's better just to have a weapon than none if you need to bash or attack for some reason. You don't have um, scythe or... Yeah, he must have decided it's worth it. I usually do not see runners equip the yo-yos because of the small amount of damage increase with the increased uh, inaccuracy, but he's decided it's worth it. Interesting gift shop uh, or uh, store here. Another thing that's part of this randomizer is all the store contents are randomized. So anytime they see a store, they're going to take a look at it. One for any items that will be helpful for them as they're going through the maze, but also to see if they can find any items to give to the monkeys or to get other NPCs out of the way to take those elevators or those skips that we talked about. Because there's quite a few skips that uh, require you to have a certain item uh, to progress through them. And protein drink is one of those. Yeah, those of you that have experience with the uh, regular version of the game, um, it's quite a maze, and the items are not shuffled that are required, so they don't have to think about, oh boy, what's going to be at this time? It's the standard set of items, hamburgers, protein, drinks, pizzas, um, fresh eggs, and a couple different options. You don't have to worry about it. It's the same items every time for those skips. 
Now that uh, story, in addition to the protein drink, also had the double burger. That works for all of the monkeys that want a hamburger, of which there are three. So there's three potential skips there, and Temple did have enough money, thanks to the fights that he had taken, to buy three burgers. So that's up to four skips he can now get through uh, if he finds them. And I'm sure we would all love him to skip off of this floor and stop listening to these door transition musics. I'm actually grooving it a little bit here. Oh, all right. Fair enough. Coin of Slumber, uh, pretty good equipment for this low. As I mentioned, the equipment uh, is generally scales linearly. As you go deeper in the cave, the equipment gets better. But that is shuffled somewhat. It's uh, distributed uh, uh, along a normal distribution. So you can get really good equipment to show up very early in the cave if uh, the odds are in your favor. And here is what we call our hype room. Most presence in one room in the game. IQ capsule could be useful. Mr. Saturn coin has some good defense. Stun gun, uh, some offense for Jeff. IQ capsule is going to uh, increase the amount of psychic points that the character who gets it has. The uh, <laughs> ribbon actually decreasing the uh, defense. It was an interesting feature. Temple was using another quality of life feature that we've added, being able to equip items from the uh, goods menu. Normally in vanilla Earthbound, you cannot do that. If you try, it just says, this is one of the items that can be equipped, and you have to go into the equip menu. Uh, it's a little annoying, so we patched that to let you equip items from the goods menu directly. The downside is that you don't know if it's a better item or a worse item if you don't remember uh, exactly what the stats are. So. There's a little backfire there, where he ended up equipping a worse item because he d couldn't see how good it was. Just early on, it's not too much to be concerned about. And still got um, PSI powers to take care of enemies this low level this early on, so they're pretty good, especially with having the uh, major room this early on. I like to see that more towards floor 8 or 9, but that... Yeah, so here's an interesting difference. They both found that arms uh, dealer in the desert Temple loaded up on bottle rockets, single bottle rockets. Uh, so they could hit, you know, somewhere in the 120 range is likely. Um, and he decided not to. Uh, and we see he gets into a scripted fight with the sentry robot. Scripted fights are different from your average uh, random encounters in that they are not biased for the level that you are at. The scripted fight is as difficult as it normally is. So that's quite a difficult fight for Floor 2, but he manages to get through it, and he's going to pick up a nice amount of experience along the way. Temple's going to get into the exact same fight right here. So we'll see how he handles it. He picked up a bunch of bottle rockets, so... But he's not going to use them on this fight. He's just going to try and get through it with Freeze. Fortunately, he still had the teddy bear that takes the first hit, so all the kids stay alive. The dangerous thing about these guys uh, is they can call for help, and you might end up fighting two or three of them at once. Very underleveled for the fight. Oh, but Temple gets through it just in the nick of time. Who is at zero HP? But if you defeat the last enemy while your character just ticked down to zero HP in Earthbound, they'll tick back up to one HP and stay alive. So Pooh's going to get the experience off of that fight as well. Checking this vendor. Ultimate bat? Oh, sorry, Tempa has already found the boss for floor two. And it's uh, Guy's Ghost. No trouble at all. So I didn't see which direction Temple took that Andy did not. But he definitely took a different direction. He is on to floor three. I think temple went to the left unless there's some kind of divergent path that I missed while uh, my stream was re- after the arms dealer. Uh, Andy has trekked all the way across the other desert. So there is a, a skip room that we were talking about. Temple talked to a monkey. The monkey wants a skip sandwich. Temple does not have one, so he cannot take that elevator right now until he finds himself a skip sandwich. 
But it's good to know if you find the skip sandwich, you can certainly expect him to come back and check out that skip to see where it goes. And he finds the full heal on floor two. Temple will definitely be keeping that skip room in mind if it's close enough if he finds that item. Um, the further he gets away, the less likely he's going to go back unless he's looking to gamble um, to jump forward a couple of floors. Um, how many floors can you jump at one time, Chad? Any given elevator will take you at a minimum two floors away. So since we're on floor three, it can't go to two or four. Uh, it'll be a minimum of floor one or five. It can go up to five away. Uh, the further away is the less likely for it to happen. There could be a skip from floor three to floor eight, which would be huge. Oh, Andy saw a skip sandwich vendor, but did not buy any. Temple is into Dungeon Man. This is an interesting room. There's lots of doors, lots of presents, but also lots of areas for enemies to spawn. It can be very annoying. Especially if you come back from a save from this phone right here. Uh, it's possible for there to be spawns right on top of you when you load from a save. And he has also, has also now found the boss of Floor 2. Oh, that was a surprise enemy inside that end. And Andy takes down the boss of Floor 2 quite easily. Now the reason Temple's going all the way to the back of this end is this is a arms dealer back here and big bottle rockets are available. This is five bottle rockets in one, so this can be some significant damage for Jeff. Uh, the way that Bottle Rockets works is each one uh, rolls to see if it hits or not, and each one that hits uh, is somewhere around 120, 150 damage. It, it's randomized. Uh, but the big Bottle Rocket firing off five of those at once can be pretty significant. It can be a good source of damage that isn't dependent on your level versus the enemy's level, so it can be a good way to defeat enemies that are much higher level than you. And he did have the skip sandwich for this skip, so... Andy is going to take this skip that Temple could not, and Andy has skipped onto an unknown floor. Looks like he's moved into the uh, Foresight department store. Yep, that's a big room, and there are some enemies there that don't look too difficult. Gets a lucky green swirl there. If you hit the enemy from the back in Earthbound, that's a green swirl, and you can run away for free on the first turn, which he does. He's going to check these shops. Again, the shops are randomized. There can be good equipment there. So how do you know which floor you're on? There are a couple of ways. Number one, as we said, each floor has its own unique music. So if you hear music you've already heard, you know which floor that is, if you can remember uh, which music was on what floor. Another way is you can kind of guess based on the strength of the enemies and the, the uh, goodness of the presence that you find. As you're an experienced runner, as both of these two runners are, you'll get to know what sort of enemies generally show up on what floor, and you can make a pretty good guess. And finally, there are five hitmen around Earthbound, and we've uh, changed the hitman so they now tell you what floor you're on and what the eight enemies are that you'll fight. So the uh, eight bosses at the end of each floor are pulled from a pool of about 40 bosses in uh, Vanilla Earthbound. So knowing what enemy you're going up against for any given floor can be pretty important. And the Hintman can tell you that if you find one of the five Hintmen. So a little interesting tidbit here, um, taking a look at Andy's stream itself. Right now he's guessing that he is on floor six based on some of the intel that he has gathered around him. Uh, we'll have to see if whether or not that pan... Now, a big thing to note here is even if Andy did skip as far ahead as he thinks, don't count Temple out yet, because Temple can find another skip, 
or if he proceeds from floor to floor, he could end up becoming better equipped um, than Andy then skipping ahead, because sometimes you might leave behind key pendants or badges for defense as you move through the game by skipping around. That's a risk you take. So Andy has taken a skip into a skip, and now he's on floor nine. So that is huge. Um, I believe he took a skip into a skip. It can be huge, but it's also very dangerous. As we see, he's up against enemies that are way higher leveled uh, than he is. He got lucky there that uh, that pile of fire enemy is actually bugged uh, in Vanilla Earthbound, and it has way less defense than it's supposed to, which makes it one of the easiest enemies you can possibly find on floor nine. Every other enemy that he's going to find on this floor is going to be extremely dangerous, and he's going to need all of his skills uh, to take down some enemies and gain some levels. Fortunately, he finds a fresh <laughs> egg. <laughs> Could help. <laughs> a little bit of health. Uh, some of the key things he's going to be looking for right now is a place to save, a place to heal, and um, a place to potentially revive characters if he doesn't have a natural way to do that. Um, once he has that, he could set himself up for a grind um, with some enemies as he um, finds the weakest ones to fight. Temple also in a good situation here. He finds a skip and he has the show ticket. That's what you need to get into that skip. So he is also on an, uh, a floor that he doesn't know now. And here's another, an example of a skip into a skip. So he just skipped. Uh, and I don't think he has any of the items needed there. That was pizza and wet towel. He doesn't have any of those. But again, that's a skip into a skip. And that could, again, put you literally anywhere in the maze. So Andy's on floor nine, but he's nowhere close to finishing this game. If he goes up against Gygus right now, he will get creamed. Uh, he needs quite a few things. He needs a number of levels. Ideally, he wants PSI Shield Sigma or Paula. That's the uh, shield that protects your entire party from psychic attacks. While you can technically beat Gygus without Shield Sigma, it is extremely hard. So 98% of the time, you'll want to level up to get Shield Sigma. He'll need some sort of resistance. This comes into the form of the good pendants, the C pendants or the star pendants. Those give 100% or sorry, 95% resistance uh, to certain types of attacks like freeze attacks and flash attacks. Gygus has those in spades. He'll need at least one of those pendants uh, or in worst case situation, an earth pendant, which is 50% protection against those attacks. Ideally, he'd like a Franklin badge. Gygus also has thunder attacks, and the only way to protect against those is a Franklin badge. Unfortunately, it's extremely unlikely to find a Franklin badge on floor 9, just because of the way the distribution works. We can talk about that in a bit, but he's almost certainly not going to find one. So that makes his whole situation, even though he's on floor 9, very difficult. And like we said, he doesn't know where a full heal is. He doesn't know where a phone is. Uh, so he's really relying on the resources that he has right now, and he's going to do his best to stay alive, get some hard fights. Jeff is dead. Uh, oh, he was fortunate to pull that off. Oh, yeah, he just got lucky to get away from there. That was two lethal attacks were counting down. Of course, with Earthbound's rolling HP, if you manage to run away, even while lethal's ticking down on your characters, those characters will stay alive. So he, it's good he's on floor nine, but he has a lot of work to do uh, to find uh, to get ready for Gygus fight. And the way that Temple progresses, he just may naturally, uh, you know, find things that make him more ready for Gygus as he progresses more naturally. Now, of course, a skip is always better. You know, it's better to be in the lead. Uh, but there are some some good things that can come from going through the floors more naturally. You'll get better equipment along the way, maybe better leveled. 
I missed it when Andy checked the uh, the hint guy. What were the bosses on the later floors? Did we have anything tough in particular that might stop Temple if you were to go? I can take a look. The boss on six is Department Store Spook. The boss on seven is Ness's Nightmare, so that's going to be the hard one. And the boss on eight is Electro Spectre. Oh, not too bad of a mix of just not wanting to see Ness's Nightmare as a, as a runner myself as something I would be keen to. Right. I would say generally for most runners, Carbon Dog slash Diamond Dog is the toughest boss in the game. He can only show up on floor eight. Uh, so this is not a Carbon Dog seed. So we have no doggo. So that's good. Really, Ness's Nightmare is the second most difficult enemy after that. Uh, but Ness's Nightmare, just because of the way the algorithm works, could show up much earlier. In this case, it's showing up on floor seven. And he finds the full yeah, he heal fell. on floor nine. That's huge. So this is a great location for him to know where it is. So if all of his characters die, he can come back and get them all alive. Dimple's at the bottom of the department store. This is the quickest place to sell items in the game. The two counters at the department store. So he's going to sell some items, get some money, clear out some space in his inventory. Inventory management in our sound is always one of those. Uh, annoying things. Uh, navigating the menus is slow. Items don't stack. It, it's just how Earthbound was programmed. Uh, so Those worthless items pile, pile up really fast. Mm -hmm. So taking the advantage of the quick sell location uh, while you're there can be really helpful. Let's see if we can find out. Floor 7. Nipples on floor seven. Yeah, there we go. He finds a hitman. So he sees he's on seven and he sees Ness's nightmare is the boss of floor seven. So I would not be surprised to see Temple aggressively hunting for a skip. He can find a skip from seven to nine and get him through these, uh, get him past these two tough bosses here on these last two floors. Here we go. A free skip. Uh, we're going to find out where that goes. Right, so this skip takes uh, the ruby that Pooh starts the game with, so it's essentially free. He recognizes from and the music see. it's a floor he's been to before, so he's going to turn right around. Andy trying to stutter step past the scripted encounter, and he does so. Stutter stepping's a technique that uh, anyone running Earthbound in any of its versions knows very well. Can't quite stutter. Well, maybe. Uh, if he pulls off that stutter step when that enemy was that close. Ooh, that's impressive. Very impressive stutter by Andy. Dipple with a rough flight on floor seven. He didn't skip as far as Andy, but he did skip ahead. So he is facing enemies that are quite difficult for him. Diamond band for Andy. Not what he's looking for. He's looking for... Well, I mean, he'll take it. It's 50 more defense for that character, so he'll go ahead and take it and equip it. But what he's really looking for are C pendants or star pendants. Yeah, the main thing that may work in Temple's favor at this point is he may have access to pendants that may not be on floor 9, which may set him up for an easier Gygus, while Andy might have to potentially throw himself at it over and over again if he can't find... Yeah, that's true. It, it'll, it'll just see how it'll work out. You know, it may be that floor nine's really nice to Andy and he pulls off a really fast time. We'll just have to see how it works out. He's certainly happy to be on floor nine, but it's tough. Uh, a less experienced runner would be in a lot of trouble here. Our audio is now on Andy, by the way. Fortunately, Andy is anything but an inexperienced runner. In this tournament alone, uh, in the elimination rounds, in two of his... He's only had three matches. In two of those matches, he has put up the fastest times of any randomizer seed that has been recorded. Put up a 28-minute time and a 39-minute time, I believe. Yeah, he threw down the gauntlet. Those were the two fastest times um, week after, or match after match on that, no, regardless of that. Before this time, no, there had been no recorded evidence of any time under 40 minutes. So Andy has put up some amazing times. And of course, Temple has done a fantastic job as well. He's uh, beaten all comers uh, except for Andy to get to this part of the tournament. Of course, the tough thing is 
he's going to have to beat Andy twice if he come out of the loser's bracket. Well, as Andy only needs one win to clinch the championship. So Andy's in an interesting situation. He's got one hit point uh, for Jeff. He's going to go ahead and give him a peanut cheese bar to try and keep him alive. He knows where the full heal is, but what he cares more about is exploring this floor, finding gift items, maybe finding Gygus, getting a better sense of what's around this floor. I don't recall him coming across a save point yet on this floor. Do you? I don't I don't recall one either. That could also be huge. He needs a phone. He needs some gift boxes. Temple finds another skip, but again, it's backwards. He's been there before. What's at this arms dealer? Nothing. This could have been big. If this arms dealer had had super bombs, that would have been an opportunity for Andy to load up. Super bombs are like guaranteed 300 and some damage. Uh, it doesn't matter what your stats are versus the enemy stats. If you can take a whole bunch of cash and load up on super bombs, it lets you defeat Gygus being very underleveled. But no super bombs at that vendor. That vendor often has super bombs. Andy walks into the backside of a shiny spot. That means he knows where the entrance to floor nine is, which is something, uh, but it's not what he was looking for. He's in a very precarious situation. If he if he doesn't find a safe spot and he takes a, a party wipe, he's going to have to work his way back to floor nine from his last save point, wherever that may be. Yeah, it's been a while. So Temple has seen the boss room for floor seven, but he also knows it's Ness's nightmare and he doesn't feel ready for it. So, he's going to go back. He finds an auto Star Master. So, this is uh, a item that is not in the vanilla game. Uh, because we've taken out all the story progression of Earthbound, you can't gain uh, Star Storm Alpha or Star Storm Omega for Poo, because those are not granted by level ups, those are granted by story progression items. So instead, we've created these items called the auto Star Master, and if you find them and use them, who gets Star Storm Alpha. So now Temple has Star Storm Alpha. That's something that Andy won't have. Uh, so it's again one of those differences that we're talking about where sometimes going through earlier floors can be good for you. The only other way you can get it, which is technically a story trigger in the vanilla game, is if uh, Master Barf was a floor boss for you, you can still get it off of defeating him. That's the only other way you can get it besides the auto Star Master. Yep, and those interact... Uh... As, as you would want them to. So if you get an auto Star Master and you get Alpha and then you fight Master Barf, you get Star Storm Omega. So as uh, these guys keep searching around these floors, I'll explain the item pool a little bit. Uh, so the way the item pool for the gift boxes that you're seeing works is uh, all of the equipment that someone could get uh, is put into a pool. Three copies for things that work on any character, one copy for things that only work on one character. Uh, along with two copies of the Franklin Badge and two copies of the Auto Star Master. All those items are put into a pool, and about 60% of that pool is used. The rest is thrown out. And those items are distributed uh, linearly over the cave. And then the rest of the gift boxes are filled in with consumables, like the bread roll, and also the skip granting items, like the backstage pass, the carrot key, all of those good things. The eraser eraser, which our runners both picked up. Talisman rib ribbon for Andy, not what he wants to see. It's something, <laughs> but uh, that only works on Paula. So it looks like he's going to rearrange his equipment here and give that to Paula so that Jeff can take one of the other defensive items. Jeff being the only character alive, he'll use any defense he can take. Temple gets the full heal, and he's going to go ahead and use the exit mouse to get to the floor seven. So we haven't talked about the exit mouse yet. In vanilla Earthbound, the exit mouse gets you out of the dungeon. It's just like the rope for a dungeon. Uh, since we don't really have a concept of a dungeon in Earthbound, we instead uh, change the exit mouse to do what the breadcrumbs do uh, in Mother One, that you can set a location uh, and then use up your exit mouse to warp back to that location. So Temple did that here at the boss room. So he went and get guys prepared as he could, and then he used his exit mouse to come back here to the boss room. And now he's fighting Ness's Nightmare, which is going to be a really rough fight from where he is.
did pick up Star Storm. He's using it to get off lots of damage and those bottle rockets. They uh, Ness's Nightmare comes with a power shield, so it's reflecting some of the damage. Ness's Nightmare is just firing off these uh, PSI attacks. Oh, he got there. Yeah, that was quick. That was quick. I think uh, maybe he got randomized to have less uh, hit points than normal. Plus, he had a really good strategy coming in. Firing off bottle rockets from the start, firing off Star Storm Alpha from the start, putting out as much damage as he possibly could. Ness's Nightmare is more than capable of just wiping out your party in more than one way. Uh, I was not expecting that fight to go as well as it did, but that is huge for Temple, and he is on to floor eight. And this is the point where Temple can start making up time on Andy, and uh, a different. Oh, Andy is not going to make it out of there. Um, unfortunately, but this is where Temple can start making things back up here. Um, and he's probably going to have to use the exit mouse if he wants to get back real quick. Right. And he did set his exit mouse at the full heal location on floor nine. So he can take this full heal here. He's going to have to leave the room and come back in for the trigger to work correctly. But now his exit mouse is gone. What he would have preferred to do is use that exit mouse to set at Gygus's location if he can find Gygus. So then when he runs around the map, prepares for Gygus, and saves at a phone and he's 100% prepared, then he could automatically exit mouse back to Gygus. He's not going to be able to do that now that he used up his exit mouse unless he finds another exit mouse source somewhere on this floor. He hits the photo yeah, trigger. Momentary <laughs> input break here. Everyone say your fuzzy... Look at the fuzzy pickle sprite for Tessie. It's beautiful. It's, uh, my friend the Kubliest on Twitter made the Tessie sprite. It's one of the fun features we have with the randomizer is uh, anyone who's a spriter has the ability to contribute sprites to the randomizer. You just have to follow a few rules about how Earthbound sprites work. Uh, and we can put them in. So all the sprites Andy is using have been contributed by various members of the community. Uh, and you can choose your sprite when you create uh, your seed, or you can just go with random sprites from the game, as Temple's chosen to do. Magic Fry Pan for Temple, that's a great find. It's an item that gives a lot of uh, bonus stat increases to Paula, in addition to just the offense boost. Was there a C pendant there I'm for Andy? C pendant. Yeah. C pendant for Andy. All right, that is, that is huge. Uh, he absolutely needed a pendant of some sort. Uh, or something. He's been searching around Floor 9 for a while and hasn't found anything good. Gaia Beam for Temple, that's Jeff's best weapon. That's pretty big. That's a lot of offense for Jeff as he works his way through Floor 8. So, whichever character Andy equips that pendant to no longer suffers from the flash attacks that can be instant kills and also can't be damaged by the freeze attacks that Gygus will be throwing out. Well, I didn't see Andy pick it up, yeah, but at the same time, then Temple also picked up a C pendant as well. So Temple oh, it was is Temple. Uh, getting some pendants. It was Temple that picked up the pendant. Yeah. I'm sorry, I, I misread that. So I don't think Andy still has a pendant at all. This is one of the dangers of skipping ahead to floor nine so quickly is you miss out on some of these key vital items you'd be looking for. Um, Andy's got to hope that he's finding C pendants or star pendants. Large pizza for Temple, that could be big as well. Uh, one of the strategies for fighting Gygus, Gygus' first turn, he'll do damage to every party member. It could be a lethal amount of damage. Large pizza is the one healing item that recovers all of your party members. So Temple has a large pizza. He can use that large pizza on the first turn to keep multiple people alive. That could be big. And that's a thing Temple will have being on floor eight and Andy won't. Andy did get through that fight though, so that's fortunate. And he's still looking for those pendants. As we remember, we talked about the item distribution. So three C pendants and three star pendants and three earth pendants all went in that item pool. And then 60% of it was used. So there's a star pendant for Andy. So this is exactly what we were talking about. There could be all three star pendants and all three C pendants in any seed, or there could be none. Uh, both of those cases are unlikely. You know, somewhere in the middle is what's more likely. Uh, but then they're distributed, and they're really good items to be distributed across the high floors, usually 7, 8, and 9. But there's no guarantee that 9 will have anything. Fortunately for Andy, it does. He finds at least one star pendant here on floor 9. He's trying to despawn these enemies. 
So in Earthbound, the enemies will despawn if you go off the screen, but then when you walk back, uh, the spawn plate has an opportunity to roll again, and the spawn plates in Randomizer are fairly high, uh, because they have to be, or else otherwise you would just despawn everything. So this plate is giving him a lot of trouble trying to despawn it. He finally gets there. <laughs> now there's another plate. Uh. Oh. Temple here uh, going up against the loaded dice, which can call for help with uh, a random assortment. Now, when you um, did the randomizer, did you change up the enemies that the loaded dice can call up, or is it still the vanilla? I have not changed that yet. Uh, so something on my maybe someday list uh, is including a number of loaded dice in the seed. So, like a low level one, a mid level one, and a high level one that all call the appropriate type of enemies. We might get there someday. I can imagine the feedback as soon as the first person discovers that. <laughs> yes, development of the randomizer is currently active. It's happening uh, at earthbound.app. We also are up on GitHub if you'd like to take a look at what we're doing. Uh, and we talk about randomizer development a lot in the Earthbound speedrunning Discord. If you're interested, it'd be a great place to join, if, especially if you're interested in working on the randomizer. We are uh, running the randomizer. We have a randomizer discussion channel. Cloak of Kings gives a little bit of defense. Andy and finding another star pendant as well. Star pendant number two, so that's really good. So, if you're not familiar with Earthbound, stage three of Gygus can only be beaten by praying. Uh, praying is one of the special three special moves that, that uh, the kids can have. Which character has Prey can be randomized. In vanilla game, it's Paula. I don't know which character it is right now. Uh, I think it's Pooh this time around. Pooh, okay. So the first star pendant you get will probably go on Pooh because he's the most important character to keep alive during the Gygus fight. The second star pendant usually goes on Ness because he's your best healer. Um, because you won't be able to defend against every type of attacking Gygus. Gygus can throw those thunders at you, and if you don't have a Franklin badge, you can't stop it. So having a healer that also stays alive through some of Gygus' fights is really important. Beating Gygus with two star pendants, one for your prayer and one for your healer, is a lot easier than beating Gygus with just one. Temple here is walking through Onet, one of the larger um, open areas of the game here, main Onet. And so he has a lot of doors to check at this point, and he's got a lot of diamond type of enemies as he works through it. So um, he's going to have to move very carefully not to get caught and avoid extra fights if he doesn't want to take. Yeah, they're very hard to dodge. Fortunately, that was the easy star, man. Uh, but yes, I believe 18 doors in central Onet. It is a lot of doors to check. If he gets lucky and finds the right door early, he could pick up some time and get on floor 9 fairly quickly. Uh, if he gets unlucky, he could take a lot of time. Bazooka, not going to be that useful here, I don't think, as Jeff has his best normal weapon. Bazooka is a special item for Jeff uh, only that's basically infinite bombs. Uh, but those will do, you know, somewhere in the neighborhood of 60 or 70 damage. Whereas I think Jeff with his weapon, the best weapon in the game for Jeff, will be doing more damage. Temple taking a break to check his equipment as he's just recently gotten some good ones. And he's getting into a groove. He's managing to defeat enemies on floor 9 while not losing any characters. He's found two star pendants. I'm sure he's thrilled about that. He's starting to get into his groove. I don't know if Paula knows Shield Sigma yet or not. I think she did pick that up a, a little bit ago. I think the main thing he's going to be trying to find now as he gets into his groove is a save point to work centrally from for this floor, unless he's getting worried that the uh, temple might be already at Kaiga. Right. There's always the question when you're running the randomizer, you don't know where your opponent is. And you're always wondering, did they take the same skips I did? Did they take better skips? Uh, did they encounter a problem? Am I ahead? Am I behind? Do I need to start taking risks? Right now, if Andy takes a death on Gygus, he's going to be back on a save that's not even on floor 9. He doesn't have an exit mouse anymore. He'd have to work his way back to a full heal and then back to Gygus. That would be rough. Uh, but he might feel if he finds Gygus, he just has to go for it. As the, we approach the 40-minute mark. Yeah, Andy's been on this floor for, what, about 20 minutes now? Yeah, it's been a while. 
And you know, he's he's got two star pendants. He has Shield Sigma. It's not impossible. These characters' HPs are really low. Is he underleveled, or do we just have really bad stats this run? I think we have terrible stats this this run, which is another factor of surviving the first attack when you uh, go into Gygus, too. Um, yeah, these stats are not that very good this time. Yeah, everyone has lots of psychic points, but no hit points to speak of. Stat growth is another one of the features that is randomized. Uh, you know, in the vanilla game, usually Paula has really low hit points. Uh, but in Randomizer, any character could have really high or really low hit points or psychic points for their level. And he is over level 30, and these are our hit point stats? Oh, wow. Chaz, I'd like to file a formal complaint about <laughs> my stat growth in this tournament right here. Please. <laughs> Temple finds the boss of floor 8. So as soon as he gets through this boss, which I don't think will cause him any trouble, what did we say this was? Electro, Electro Spectre. Spectre? He's just got to deal with all the lightning. Well, he doesn't have a Franklin badge, so that could be a problem. Electro Spectre Open starts out with a shield. Oh, but Electro Spectre uses the neutralizer on his first turn, wiping out his own shield. So that's really fortunate for Temple. Basically, uh, even better than a wasted turn from Electro Spectre, a turn that Electro Spectre made himself worse. Uh, so he's going to start unleashing the psychic attacks now. That Electro Spectre has cleared the way. Those and the big bottle rockets, he's putting out a lot of damage. Electro Spectre puts out a lot of damage too, but Temple is putting out a huge number of damage. I don't think he's going to have any more trouble with this fight. Uh, another waste of turn by Electro Spectre here. Um, and got a Solidify off as well, so that's another... Yep, Solidify on that freeze, that's great. Big bottle rocket lands. That Star Storm is just coming in for all that extra damage. Yeah, 409 from that Star Storm. 16, here's a freeze. Damage is really racking up. It looks like Electro Spectre may have been randomized a little on the high side for hit points. Lethal damage put onto Ness. Will this Star Storm get it done? It does. Ness stays and alive. It does. And boss eight is down, and Temple joins Andy on floor nine. So excellent work through two Temple's tough not floors. Be... Yeah, Temple's not going to be too concerned about burning off all the uh, bottle rockets and big bottle rockets, um, because unless you have a speed uh, item for Jeff, typically you're not going to be able to be too effective with bottle rockets or multi-bottle rockets on Pokey in the final battle. Right, he probably won't worry about those. So, if we look at where we are, Temple's skip onto floor 7 took place after Andy's skip onto floor 9, and in that time, Andy hasn't found... He's found two star pendants, but he hasn't even found Gygus. Meanwhile, Temple blazed his way through floor 7 with Ness's Nightmare and floor 8. And has now joined him on floor nine. He's still a little behind. Uh, what does he have uh, that could help him in this situation that Andy won't have? He has the large pizza. So he can do large pizza strats on Gygus phase one. He has the Gaia beam for Jeff. So Jeff's putting out a lot of damage. I think they're about he's the got, same level. He's got a C pendant already. So he doesn't have to spend as much time looking for additional pendants. Yep, that's true. Andy is going to... Check out a couple of gifts on the spiral here in Magic Camp. There's no doors this way on the spiral, but there are th four gift boxes. And of course, gifts on floor nine can be hugely important. Oh, I just realized that's the small uh, room of the, uh, the Mole Cave and Desert. Ah, yep. That's nice to see that in the ring. Yep, it's there. <laughs> It's one of the uh, non-critical rooms, so it doesn't show up in too many seeds, but it's in there. Souvenir coin, a little bit of defense, but again, not really what Andy's looking for. What is he looking for right now, Airframe? If you were in Andy's spot, what would you be hoping to see in these last two gift boxes? Maybe another pendant, and maybe something that would either provide more defense as I go forward, or some kind of attack, or maybe the heavy bazooka if I don't have it yet. 
right? And he doesn't have any bazooka. And I don't know what his weapon is on Jeff. But I don't think it's anything important. He hasn't found multi-bottle rockets. So Jeff is really kind of dead weight right now. That would change if he found the heavy bazooka. That would give Jeff infinite super bombs, which is like 300 and some damage uh, at a time guaranteed. I, I think keep chucking those bombs. Mm -hmm. that, that would pretty clearly be the, the most critical thing for Andy to find right now. Other things that could be good, a horn of life. That's a uh, full heal item you can use in battle that heals you up to full hit points and psychic points from dead. And a uh, heavy bazooka has been found. Heavy bazooka in that gift box. Exactly what Andy was looking for. So, going all the way out on the spiral, definitely worth it for Andy. No, he just has to find Gygus. Right, he's probably not going to find anything better on floor 9, obviously. Um, he could find another pendant, uh, but he already has two pendants. The third pendant is not nearly as valuable as the first two. The first one for your prey character and the second one for your healer. Uh, you don't really need... A third character to stay alive in Gygus phases two and three. It can be nice, but it's not really necessary. Uh, he's almost certainly, just because of the way the items distribution work, not going to find a Franklin badge on floor nine. It's possible. I've seen one seed where there was a Franklin badge on floor nine, uh, but 99% there's not going to be one. Nipple finds a horn of life, by the way, that I was just talking about. I will always hold on to that 1%, just hoping that I didn't skip past. I guess it's a little bit more than 1% because you could get the shack room on floor 9 and that uh, that the shack room doesn't uh, abide by the item distribution rules. It abides by the room distribution rules. But it still might only be 1% of itself. So we'll, we'll call it 2% of a shot. Tipple getting cornered by a lot of enemy spawns here on four side. Yeah. Um, for those of you who are unfamiliar, Shack Room is the story point in the game where you see Paula for the first time in a prison cell. Um, that's Shack Room. You get a uh, free friend from Vlad. Yep, it can be. It's it's uh, that plus if you get a seed that has both that room in it, plus two Franklin badges in chests, you could get up to three Franklin badges in one seed. Magic Pudding for Andy. That's an item that restores psychic points. It's not bad. Another skip on the floor nine. Useless at this point. Right, there's no need to skip backwards. Unless it gives you a save door out of desperation. So Temple and Andy still exploring floor nine. Andy's obviously explored a lot more. He knows where two full heals are because talking to mom here in Magicant... Uh, is a free full heal. It resurrects your party members. So Andy's just trying to hunt down those last doors to find Gygus. Temple has a lot more Floor 9 to work. Of course, he could take the right turns and find Gygus before Andy does. And he could go for it. He has a sea pendant. Yeah, he could. He might at this point, knowing yeah. what Andy's been throwing down in the sea. I think he would. I think if Temple found Gygus, he'd go for it. At 48 minutes in, knowing he's up against Andy, he'd go for it. He still has an exit mouse too, right? So he could easily throw that down and throw his first attempt at Uh, did he pick up another one? I know he used it on floor seven. Oh, did he? Okay. I thought he I thought he didn't. I missed that. Yeah, he, he used it on floor seven to get back to the boss, uh, to Ness's nightmare there. I don't believe he's picked up another one since. Or nine just does not have phones, does it? <laughs> I don't know. I might start searching our uh, little cheat sheet here and see if there is any. And there's Gygus. Nipple took the right direction. Uh, he gets to name the player character here, walking into the Gygus room. Ever hate? <laughs> Okay. All right, Devil. Is he going to go for it? Let's see. Not yet. Interesting. I really thought he would have went for it. Ah, oh, thank oh, you. I see. I... 
Okay, that helps. Thank you. That makes ever hate makes more sense. Thank you for that. Alright, so this is an interesting situation. Temple knows where Gygus is, but he knows there's a whole lot of Floor 9 he has not explored. And he's explored almost all of Floor 9. In fact, he's going to go find Gygus right now. Uh, he's just through this door. There we are. We'll see what name Andy picks. And Andy surely is I going to go for it. I really appreciate the dedication of the players putting in a name and taking the time to spell it out. It's worth the time. It's worth the time. You know, they, they're nowhere near in the race to, to maybe win the tournament or not, but it was a maze of the ninth. I don't know. Temple got through it really fast, Andy. I don't know what your problem was. <laughs> Man, Andy, we're here 29 minutes now. Andy checking his stats. Man, these HP totals are just terrible. Oh, man. I would be really hesitant to go forward, but that's me not being at the same caliber as these players. Well, I mean, the HP totals aren't going to get any better. The stat growth is terrible. You could grind for hours and they would still be terrible. Temple in the room uh, with the two star pennants. Yeah, I think Temple's going to probably feel like he's ready at this point now after getting the... He may be looking for a phone. Uh... Just like, uh, just like Andy was. The question is, how long is he going to look now that he has three good pendants? And he knows where Gygus is, and he's seeing the timer tick up. How long is he going to look? He's just looking for a clear path at this point. I think I think he might go back towards Gygus at this point. That's my personal feeling right now. I don't feel like Temple's likely to go on the search all the way and end up with that heavy bazooka just because he knows where Gygus is, he knows the timer's ticking up, and going all the way out on the spiral, that's a lot of time, and he's he's got to be feeling the pressure. He'd love a phone, but uh, I, I think Andy explored, if not every, then almost every room on Floor 9. I don't think we saw a single one. I think Floor 9 is completely phoneless, which is wild. I don't know what the odds of that are, but they're not high. All right. He's looking at those numbers like, really? I can take a beta and wipe my entire party on the first turn, and there's just nothing I can do about it with these HP numbers? All right. Sure. If that if that happens, I'm gonna blame you, Chaz, for it. You said it, not me. So I'm gonna blame you it's, completely if that happens. It's a statistical fact that it could happen. Sure, to hide behind the statistical facts. Now you already said it. Though. All right, let's see, Gygus. We'll open with the standard opening, I'm sure. Paralysis on Pokey. A 50% chance of that succeeding. It'll stop Pokey from doing any moves. Heavy bazooka on Pokey. Starting out with a life up Four. on Paula. It's an alpha. This is big. Everyone's going to Thank stay alive. Lord. Paralysis. He has a strong chance now. Paralysis succeeds. That is exactly what Andy wanted to see out of turn one. Could not have gone better. Everyone's alive. Pokey is paralyzed. Now Temple's making his way towards Gygus as well. This is going to be an interesting race towards the end of Gygus if uh, Temple has a same lucky opening. Temple's got to despawn some enemies. Enemies can spawn in this room now. You know, that's fun. Why not? Yeah, Temple does have the large pizza. So if Temple gets a beta on turn one, if he uses that large pizza, all his characters will still stay alive. And he just had to get lucky. Temple's got the large pizza. He doesn't have to get lucky. So, uh, now that Pokey is paralyzed and everyone's alive, as long as Paula has 24 Psychic Points to use Shield Sigma every third turn to keep that Psychic Shield up, Andy can't take any damage in Phase 1. So all you have to do is keep your math right and make sure Paula keeps enough Psychic Points. And Paula has tons of Psychic Points, so that shouldn't be a problem. So he just has to grind out the damage on Pokey to get out of Phase 1, but he should, assuming he doesn't mess up his count on anything, be completely safe. Well, there's the end of phase one right there. So we're moving on to phase two, which is just pure damage dealing and keeping your prayer character alive. Right. Again, you have to switch to where you're still dealing damage, but Gygus has switched his attacks. Now he does the full party attacks 
uh, that could be freeze base. He can do the lightning attacks. He can do the flash attacks that can be instant kills on characters that don't have C or star pendants. Pimple starting his Gygus phase one. Gygus can also give empty turns, which can be big. And he's going with the Brain Shock. This confuses Gygus. Now half of his attacks will target himself instead. This works on Gygus phases 2 and 3. It also works on phase 1, but you don't normally need to do it. An Alpha on Temple on turn 1. The Paralysis succeeds. So Temple also gets the lucky opening turn 1. He's just got to get through the damage, and he'll be through to phase 2 as well. Despite how far apart they were for most of this, this is going to be a race to the finish now. This is very close. So it looks like, yeah, Andy is not going to have enough time to keep Jeff alive. Jeff had the heavy bazooka. He was doing most of the damage. Uh, Paula with Freeze was doing the second most damage. Uh, Pooh the third and... Uh, Nest the fourth, but it doesn't matter. He had done enough damage that he's going to get through phase two, and now he's into phase three. At this point, he just needs to do nine prayers. Uh, Pooh is our prey character. So he has to keep Pooh alive long enough to do nine prayers. The only attack that can truly hurt Pooh from Gygus is the thunder attack. The flash attack can't do anything thanks to the star pendant. The freeze attack only does like nine HP of damage. The thunder attacks, when they connect, each thunder can do anywhere from, uh, what is it, 80 to 140, 150 damage? Yeah, 75 to 150, that. I think. And up to two of them can connect at once. The odds are low, but it's possible. He's going to go ahead and take a turn off of praying to confuse Gygus with Brain Shock. Now, once again, Gygus' attacks could be hitting himself. So that was the thunder right there. I think those thunders missed because Gygus was confused and targeted himself with those thunders. So that decreases the odds of Pooh getting hit by thunders even more. Since you don't have the sure thing of the Franklin badge, you have to do everything you can to keep the odds of those thunders away from you. He also has the other thing playing in his favor favor right now is that both uh, Paula and Jeff are dead, which reduces if the attack was to come towards him by 50% of actually striking it. Right. So, uh, he's moving into just automatically life-upping every turn with Ness. Ness has plenty of psychic points enough to do this for the rest of the game uh, until all the prayers are done. So he's going to fire up off these life-ups in the hope that if Gygus connects with these thunders and does lethal... Ness might be able to get off the life up before Pooh dies, as long as he queues them up. So he's going to be queuing up these life ups every turn. Meanwhile, Temple's on to phase two. He only has one pendant, uh, and not as good a way of dealing damage as he doesn't have the heavy bazooka. So this phase two is going to be a little bit more difficult for him. Does have Star Storm, though. That's going to help. The prayers are working so far. We're dodging lightnings from Andy. The scary thing I notice is that both Ness and Pooh are swapping back and forth on who goes first, so a turn order is going to be important if it comes into play. Right, if it's, a, if it's an unlucky turn where the double lightnings happen and Ness goes first, the life up isn't going to help. This is prayer number eight. Lightning from Gygus, but he attacks himself. Here's prayer number eight. And Temple goes into phase number three of Gygus as another lightning on Gygus himself. And Andy wins at 59 minutes and 17 seconds. Congratulations to Andy. He is our Earthbound Super Series Ancient Cave 2020 champion. Let's see, I'm going to throw the invite out there to Andy to see if he has the capability of joining us here in the commentator. So congratulations to Andy. I did misspeak earlier. I said Temple only had the one pendant. He actually has three pendants because he found those same star pendants as well. Uh, of course, he found those after finding Gygus and deciding to go look for more items. So it might have been that going to look for those extra pendants 
Uh, might have been the difference, because he did find Gygus first. Unfortunately, takes the lightning on Pooh, along with the lightning on Ness, killing off Ness. And now, Pooh doesn't have enough psychic points to life up himself. He has the magic truffle and the bottle of water. He's going to have to take a turn off of praying to give himself psychic points. And then take another turn off of praying to life himself up. And then he will be back to praying. Unfortunate, both Pooh and Ness taking a lightning on the same turn there. Oh. Oh no! The double lightning's exactly what you don't want to see. Now with the Prey character down, uh, and no. Uh, revival items on Jeff. Nipple has no way to beat Gygus this time. The frustrated cursor movements. Oh, <laughs> man. oh, that hurts. But for Andy, the war against Gygus is over as he is our champion. Congratulations to both runners on a wonderful tournament. This was a great race. Looks like Andy just stepped here into the commentary booth with us. Welcome and congratulations, Andy, on taking the Super Super. Yeah, congratulations. Your mic is muted, by the way. All right, I guess Andy's still soaring out his mic as he does. We're going to take a look at the statistics. We add some statistics into the credits. We can see that Andy took 32 random battles and seven scripted battles. See how much damage he received and dealt. He freed one chicken, which was the important thing. One chicken freed, two L button, no problem here. It's, uh, as, as long as we freed a chicken, that was the most important thing that happened here tonight. I think we can all agree. Um, Temple has officially forfeited the race on Speed Racing TV, so that'll bring his attempt at a close here. Congratulations to Temple, though. An excellent fought race. Andy, are you with us now? Still not. That's all right. Uh, as we're looking at here in the credits, we see this is the line. The Super Series Ancient Cave winners last year's winner, Aurelix. Very shortly, Andy's name will appear right below there as this year's Super Series Ancient Cave winner. So big congratulations to him uh, and also to Temple for a well-fought race. And, and uh, to everyone who participated Super Series Ancient Cave Tournament this year. We had so many excellent races uh, this tournament. It was, I got to commentate a lot of them and it was an absolute joy. So it's a temple for, for a well fought race. And, and uh, to everyone who participated in the Super Series Oop. Ancient Cave Tournament. There's Andy's audio. <laughs> so many excellent yep. races. Turn that off. There we go. Andy, are you with us now? Oh, he'll still work it. <laughs> Andy, just say hi when you're ready. So, like I said, development of uh, the Earthbound Randomizer at Earthbound.app is continuing. Now that the tournament is over, we can expect a small batch of new updates. We've got I've got a few things I want to do uh, right away, uh, but we'll see some improvements uh, for hopefully for next year's tournament. I think I'm here now. Oh, there he is. You're a little loud, but you're <laughs> Sorry, here. I'm, I'm, I'm in a kind of a, a mess of a setup right now. It took me a while to get something working. That's all right. Congratulations on your victory in the tournament. Thank you very much. That ninth floor was just absolutely abysmal. Talking to Temple, sounds like he was right behind me. I had no idea he was that close. Yeah, he blazed right through it. Uh, you had skipped onto nine, and then after that skip, Temple had skipped onto seven, which, as you know, had Nessus Nightmare. And he got through seven and through eight and onto nine and found Gygus before you did. <laughs> it was pretty wild. Yeah, I just I just struggled. Then there was about three loops 
going in and out of random doors on foreside and it was in those right. loops of doors that i kind of got lost a few times and i just i feel like i backtracked and tried to figure out which door i missed to navigate my way through because i knew foreside was the way forward because i found the way back to floor eight and right. i just just scrambling to try and find out where on earth i got lost in that maze of a loop right and well with every move being risky with not finding a phone anywhere nearby uh, i don't even know if there was a floor on nine or a, a phone on nine because i i by the time i found the gigas room i knew i had looked pretty thoroughly through every single room and i decided that i wasn't willing to backtrack to floor and whatever whatever shortcut i took to floor nine i was on floor six i i, I get my is my guess right but uh, i would have to have backtracked to floor six to find a phone and i figured eh I can get back here if I need to. I saved on floor two. I can find my way back here if I need to. And I just kind of gambled with it without a save. Yeah, but we, we got there. It was uh, uh, the good turn one from Gygus, the one that we always want to see. Yeah, everything was pretty much easy, and I found that heavy bazooka just uh, navigating floors as well. So as soon as I found that heavy bazooka and I had two, two, two star pundits, one of them I believe I found in that room, um, or the heavy bazooka was in the magic hand loop, and then the star pendant was in the flashing room in Stonehenge base. And as soon as I found all those, I knew I was ready and I could make it happen. Even with my low HP rolls, I just needed to get a rock and alpha and I could wrap it up and not take a, a bad lightning during phase three. Yeah, no, that was the other thing. That was the difference. Temple, while he was slow on floor seven and eight, found a large pizza. So uh, he didn't need to gamble with the alpha. But that uh, would have been nice. <laughs> <laughs> but the gamble paid off and, and uh, managed to pull it out. And uh, as, as we mentioned earlier during the tournament, too, Two amazing times this tournament, and it's still sub hour, uh, even with this difficulty. So, excellent times in this tournament. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Well, Airframe, do you have uh, anything to add or anything you want to ask? Um, not really at this point, other than just to congratulate Andy. I had to step away for a minute here, so I missed all the questions i'm trying to um at this point um we're going to do a community race since the tournament has ended in one match so we're working on getting this set up here in the background